a watchtower. In reference to this month's annual meeting, are you really feeling the blessings? I doubt it very much. How you doing guys? I had intended this video to cover the uh, this month's annual meeting of Jehovah's Witnesses, but after finding out the information I did, and I'm talking about that leaked information, which uh, kind of had come about over the last few days, and watching Parker's live stream last night, I decided to shift gears. For those of you who don't know, more leaked information about the child molestation problem within Watchtower has come to light and actually Newsweek had done an article on it. I do have the article for those of you who uh, are unaware of this, who haven't heard it yet, I'm going to read the article to you and you can, we'll see what you think. I'll be right back. Anyways guys, Faith Leaks had leaked this uh, information about two or three days ago, but I do have the uh, Newsweek article right here, where it says, in 1999, the Committee of Church Elders determined that the allegations of two young women who said their father had sexually abused them were true. One of the young women said that she had been tied to a bed by her father and had her vagina examined for signs of masturbation when she was young as five. The accused, accuser's sister also said her father had started to fondle and touch her when she was only three years old. The woman said she was repeatedly raped by her father between the ages of eight and twelve. The young woman said that her father would sit on her bed and cry and pray after raping her. Okay, I guess that makes it okay then. That was pretty damn disgusting. Our impression, impression upon speaking with both girls was similar, that they are both quite rational. It certainly appears that these were real events. The letter to Watchtower signed with warm Christian love from the Palmer Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses of Brinfield, Massachusetts reads, Nevertheless, the church leaders opted not to take action immediately because one of the accusers did not want to face her father and make a formal complaint, an action required by the church judicial committee an in-church trial was eventually held years later, which resulted in the temporary and brief excommunication of the father. The son of a bitch should be in jail. The document revealed that the church leaders pressured the accuser and her husband not to report the abuse to secular law enforcement officials. Police had questioned the accused man, but official charges were never brought against him. The same man was also accused of raping another young woman who was not a relative. The church documents reveal the church elder doubted the woman's credibility because she had her eyes her eyes were closed during the assault. So I guess now you have to watch the assault on yourself for it to count. The names of the accusers and the accused are re reacted in the documents to protect their privacy. This is this is not the first time the Jehovah's Witnesses Church has been accused of sexual abuse. In 2014, a San Diego judge ordered Watchtower to award $13.5 million to a man who was abused by a church elder, church leader, when he was just seven years old. Six others also sued Watchtower because they had been sexually abused by the same church leader. But the cases were never settled out of court. The Center of Investigation reporting site reveals claims that Watchtower has systematically instructed leaders to keep sexual abuse secret from law enforcement. Watchtower did not immediately respond to request of Cook to comment. Guys, 
Enough said. Like I said, I was planning on uh, planning on covering the annual meeting, and I came across this, and I just think that everybody should be well aware of it. You hold on one second, guys. Light is better over here. After reading that and watching the live stream last night, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, I know you're in denial that these things are going on. Most of you is anyway. You really don't think that they're happening. You believe they're apostate-driven lies and dishonesties, just like Gumby said a few years ago. And Watchtower is well aware that these things are going on. And yet, watching the annual meeting, an hour and a half or so, all I could tolerate, was, first of all, Jeffrey Jackass going back and forth, flip-flopping again that I could barely listen to, and then three guys for the next hour patting each other on the back over what? A frigging building project. And answer me one question. How is a building project furthering the kingdom work? It's not. It's bullshit. It's a building with slave labor. Yes, we could feel Jehovah's blessing on this. Okay, you could feel Jehovah's blessing on a building, but do you feel his blessing when you're now being sought after by courts all over the world because of the child molestation problem? You call this spiritual food? The spiritual food I've seen in the last year, the annual meeting, covers the dedication to an effing building. Last year, what was it? A letter-writing campaign to the Russian Federation. Jehovah's Witnesses, you call the spiritual food? I sure as hell don't. Because if your spiritual food was on a menu anywhere, it would be a, the equivalent to a triple deck of shit burger with soggy fries and a mucus milkshake. Guys, that's pretty much all I want to say on that. But I just wanted to get this out there. I really would like to hear your comments. And if you come across this video, hit the subscribe button. And I want to thank my subscribers guys, but I just uh, take a look up the Newsweek article for yourself, and I will talk to you soon. You guys have a good night.